FirstStepReading.com. Hi, this is Heather from FirstStepReading.com. You will find today's sentence under August 21st, but other than that, the date is used as a learning tool and an example. So you can watch this video on any day. So let's get started. We're going to start with the months of the year. Do you know how many months are in one year? Here's the month. How many? Twelve. Let's say them together. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. These are the 12 months in a year. Today we're talking about August. August is in the season of summer. There are four seasons in the year. In the summer, it's the hottest season. It's where people like to go swimming. They usually have a summer break from school. After summer comes fall or autumn. That's where it starts to cool down and the leaves change colors and they start to fall off the tree. Because winter is our coldest season and most of the trees will have no leaves and in many places it will snow. After our coldest season, winter, it starts to warm up again in the spring. Spring is known for rain because the flowers are going to start to grow and the leaves are going to come back on the trees. After spring, it's summer again, the hottest season. So these are our four seasons of the year. Summer's the hottest, winter's the coldest. And August is in the summer. So if you have your daily calendar, you can take it out now, and we're going to do the months and the dates together. So we have to figure out what date it is for this video. And in order to figure out the date, we have to count. So let's count together. You want to know what number comes after 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21. That's our number of today. 21 is a 2 and then a 1. But we have a pattern on our calendar. It's an ABB pattern. Red, black, black. So let's figure out if our 21 should be black or red. Red, black, black. Red, black, black. Red, black, black. Red, Black, black, red, black, black, red, black, black, red, black, black. Good job. 21 should be black. So on my calendar, I can circle August 21. You can do it with the date that we're doing here, or you can do it with the date that you're watching the video. Now we're going to go over the days of the week. We're going to do that. Oh. We're going to do that by singing our days of the week song. First, I want to talk about our letter of today. Our letter of today is U. We're reviewing our long vowels. So, our long vowel U says U, says its name. And our short vowel U says U, uh, like up. Long vowel U says U like unicorn, universe. Let me get a sheet that fell. Okay. And we're going to do our seven days of the week together. If you know the song, please sing along. Ready? There are seven days. There are seven days. There are seven days a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Seven days in our week, and today is Friday. So if you have your days of the week, you can circle Friday. And if today is Friday, what day was it yesterday? If today is Friday, 
yesterday would be Thursday. And if today is Friday, tomorrow would be Saturday. See, if today is Friday, yesterday was Thursday. And if today is Friday, tomorrow is Saturday. So you can do that with me or you can ask your adult what day of the week it is. And then try to figure out what day it was yesterday and what day it will be tomorrow. And do it on this paper. Okay? Now we're going to talk about the weather. I said that I'm talking about August and August is in the summer. But you might be watching this video in the winter, the fall or autumn. Fall and autumn mean the same thing, right? Or in the spring. So that would be your season. The season I'm talking about is summer and to figure out the weather where I live and where you live, you look out the window. So I'm looking out my window and I see it's sunny and hot today where I live. So sunny is the sun is shining, there's barely any clouds in the sky. You might look out your window and say, oh, it's raining. So you would say it's rainy or it's very windy. Then you'd say it's windy. Or if you see snow falling, you could say it's snowy. Or if you can't see the sun, because it's all full of clouds, you would say it's cloudy. So you pick one that describes the weather best. Then this one describes the temperature. Hot is swimming weather. Warm is pretty hot, but not hot enough to go swimming. And then cold is our coldest. So it's freezing cold. And then cool is it's pretty cold, but not quite freezing winter weather. So cold would be winter. Cool is pretty cold, but not winter. Okay? So you choose one thing to describe the temperature and one thing to describe the weather in general. And you can do your weather report. So I would do this square sunny and I would do this square hot. And you can graph your weather by looking out your window on this paper. So now we're going to move on to math. We always start with our skip counting. So that is our counting by twos. You can take out that and counting by fives. And if you have this, you can read the numbers in black. And if you don't have this, that's fine. You'll read them with me up here. The twos are in green, the fives are in black. So let's get started. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Amazing, that was counting by twos. Now we're gonna count by fives, they're in black, up here. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Amazing. Now we're going to count by tens. It's in red only up here. You don't have a sheet for this one. And we're going to go all the way to 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Great job. Please continue to practice your fives, your tens, and your twos worksheet, okay? If you don't practice, you forget. Now I'm gonna take out our math unit. Our math unit we're working on is addition. So we have been talking about addition. So I want you to use some sort of counting object that helps you count. You can use popsicle sticks. You can use pom-poms, mini erasers, paper clips. You can buy counters. These are from Dollar Tree. It is very helpful to have an actual object to help you with addition. So we talked about a 
addition with pictures. We had our cookie addition where you count the pictures because addition means how many all together. So if I have one cookie and I have one more, how many cookies do I have? I have one, two cookies. And we have our candy one. And we have our kitty cat one. And then we have our actual numbers. I wanted to do this one with you. It kind of combines pictures and numbers. So we're going to do that one as a review today of both kinds of addition. So let's start with this one. So I count how many rainbows and I count how many rainbows and I see how many rainbows all together. So I continue counting. So let's do it together. I like to make a dot on my picture so I know I already counted them. So one, two, three, four, five. There are five rainbows. Now I'm going to count here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six rainbows. Now here, one, two, three, four, five. That's how you do with pictures. Now this last one doesn't have any pictures, so I need to use counters. It says I need six and four. So let me put six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and four over here. Do you see? First, I'm just making sure I have six and four. One, two, three, four. Now I have to count and see how many I have all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 10 together. You see how I did that? I made sure I had six and I had four. Then I count all of them together and that's my answer. So this sheet is a good one to do today. It reviews pictures and numbers. And if you want more practice with numbers, there's more number sheets. There's numbers to five, and there's numbers to 10. So you can, there's lots of addition sheets you can do practice. If you don't have pictures, please use something to help you. Another tool that's helpful is, let's say I was doing one plus six. Let me erase it so it's not confusing. Let's say I'm doing one plus six. I can have a plate to put my numbers so I know I've counted them. So first I count out my one and my six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have my one and my six, right? Now I want to make sure I counted them and I don't double count them. So every time I count it, I put it on the plate. I'll put the plate up higher so you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if it's on the plate, that means I counted it. So you can have a system so you know which ones you counted and which ones you didn't. You can have two plates. You can have one plate for your one and six, and you can have another plate where you transfer them so that you count them all. Because first you have to count out one and you have to count out six. Then you want to count them all together. Here you count out four and you count out four. Then you want to count them all together. So you can have a place you put them so you can make sure you counted each object. Okay? I'll do that one more time. I'll do it up here. So I'll do four and four. One, two, three, four. You see how I counted out four? 
That's my first set. Four. And then I'm counting out four again. One, two, three, and four. So I have four plus four. Now to know I counted it, I'm going to stick it on the plate after I count it because now I'm counting them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my answer is eight. So first I laid out my four and my four, then I counted them all together and I dropped them on the plate after I counted them to make sure I counted it. So my answer is eight. And my other answer was seven. So you understand? So you can try doing more practice with just numbers and counters and you can do it with the pictures. So you can see if you can go up to to addition to 10 or you can go addition to 5, whatever you feel comfortable with. You can print your mats, you can use these with popsicle sticks, with your paper clips, with mini erasers, pieces of paper. You can cut these. There's different uh, counters that you can print and cut, but please use counters with your addition. Now we're going to move on to science. Move all this. Okay. Here's our science. So for science, today's our last day talking about dinosaurs. What is a dinosaur? A dinosaur is what was, dinosaurs were reptiles that lived on earth over 65 million years ago, a very, very long time ago. But dinosaurs are extinct. Extinct means they're no longer alive. But scientists called paleontologists study the fossils of the dinosaurs so we can learn about them. So there's different kind of fossils. There's fossils of bones that they study and they put them together like a puzzle and try to build what the dinosaur looked like. There's fossils of coprolite, which is dinosaur poop, which tells us what the dinosaur ate. And there's fossils of dinosaur prints and it just gives us idea of maybe their footprint, or sometimes it's an imprint of their bone, and it is another kind of fossil. So some of the dinosaurs we talked about, there were many, many, many kinds of dinosaurs, but the ones we went over were Stegosaurus. It's the dinosaur that has the, these plates on its back. See, plates all over its back and spikes on its tail. That's what it's known for. It, Stegosaurus means roofed lizard. It lived about 150 million years ago. It was thought to be very slow and not the smartest dinosaur. It weighed about 4,000 pounds. It's known for its spikes, its uh, plates on its back, and its spikes on its tail that were used as protection because it was a very slow dinosaur. And it ate it was an herbivore, which means it ate plants. So we talked about Stegosaurus. We talked about Triceratops. Triceratops means three-horned face because it has three horns on its face. It was thought to look a lot similar to a rhinoceros, the build of the Triceratops. This we have, right? They're not extinct rhinoceroses. You can find them in the zoo, but triceratops are extinct. They're known for this bill on the top of its head. 
frill, sorry, frill on the top of its head, and the three horns. It walked on four legs. It was an herbivore, which means it ate plants. So this one was about 13,000 pounds. That's pretty big too. And it used these three horns to protect itself from meat-eating dinosaurs. Meat-eating dinosaurs ate other dinosaurs. The other dinosaur we talked about was a Diplodacus. That one is very long. It has a long tail and a long neck. It looks very similar to a Brachiosaurus, except for the Brachiosaurus was more tall, like its neck went more straight up like a giraffe. So yeah, the neck is straight and the other one was more long, but they're very, very similar. They're both plant-eating dinosaurs, herbivores. Uh, because it has a very long neck, it can eat from leaves from trees, right? And it walked on four legs and weighed about 20,000 pounds. Also, these dinosaurs were very big. Its name means double-beamed lizard, the Diplodacus, okay? So I told you about a really cool thing. If you Google Stegosaurus, Triceratops, and Brontosaurus, you can't do, they don't have Diplodacus, but they look very similar. If you Google them and then you hit 3D, you can see what they look like and it looks like the dinosaur is in your house. And you could take a picture or a video and it, you can see how these dinosaurs moved and it gives us a very good idea of how these dinosaurs were. So I recommend that if your adult says okay. And another vocabulary word that is, has to do with Diplodacus and Brontosaurus is they lived in herds, which is large groups. They lived with lots of other Diplodacus or Brontosaurus, depending on what kind of dinosaur we're talking about. They lived together in large groups with lots of families and they'd roam and eat their trees and migrate, like move to other areas together as a large group. So those were our herbivores we talked about. And this is the worksheet you can do. You cut and paste the five dinosaurs we talked about and glue only the herbivores. Then we talked about our carnivores. Those are our meat-eating dinosaurs or they eat other dinosaurs. We talked about the two we talked about, right? There's many, many, many dinosaurs. We only talked about two carnivores and we talked about three um, herbivores. So the carnivores we talked about was Tyrannosaurus rex and Velociraptor. Tyrannosaurus rex was a giant dinosaur. It weighed about 14,000 pounds. It was very big. It ate other dinosaurs, right? It's a carnivore. It had a large head, a long tail, long and large, like a long and fat tail that helped with balance because it walked on two legs and had two little arms. Its name, Tyrannosaurus rex, means king of the tyrant lizards, right? He, so he's a big one. And then we also talked about Velociraptor, which was a very small meat-eating meat dinosaur. He's only about 55 pounds. That's not that big, right? But he was still very dangerous because Velociraptors, they hunted other dinosaurs in packs kind of like wolves where they had a leader and they were very smart and they would trick other dinosaurs so that they can eat them for food. So Velociraptor means quick plunderer. It lived about 70 million years ago. It had back legs with strong claws and ran fast for short amounts of time on their two back feet. Yeah, and they hunted in packs where they would trap other dinosaurs and eat them for food. So those were the five dinosaurs we talked about. And you can also, if your adult says okay, you can Google Tyrannosaurus Rex and you can Google Velociraptor and hit 3D and you can see them in your home. Pretend, right? It's not real. And you can get an idea of what they look like and how they moved and it's very interesting. So you can try that if your adult says okay. And you can do this worksheet. The other two activities that we said you could do is you can create coprolite, fossil poop. So
So look at my fossil poop I made. I put pretend bones that I found at the dollar store because it's almost Halloween. So they had some pretend bones and I broke them up and put them in. So this one has bones and this one I put seeds and stems and leaves. So if, I, if a paleontologist found this one with the leaves and the stems and the seeds, would they say it's an herbivore or a carnivore? It'd be an herbivore dinosaur because it ate plants. If a paleontologist found this one with bones in it, they would know the dinosaur was a carnivore. You can also make your own dinosaur fossils. You can make bones with salt dough or clay. You can make imprints with salt dough or clay. This is the directions to make salt dough. And you can hide a toy, if an adult says okay, of a dinosaur inside the salt dough. Let it get hard as a rock and try to dig it out because when paleontologists find dinosaur bones, they're actually found in rocks. It's not so simple. So you can try to be a paleontologist and try to carefully get out a dinosaur toy. Or if you make it out of salt dough, you can make your bone out of clay and carefully try to get that out of your salt dough. So that's another activity you can try. There's some fun hands-on stuff you can do. So that's it for dinosaurs this week. I hope you try some of those activities and you do the worksheets because next week we're moving on and we're going to do tons and tons of experiments. It's our last week of summer learning before fall and so for science we're going to do experiments. Just tons of fun hands-on experiments and so I will get the, I'm not making the ingredients very hard, they're very like milk, eggs, things we have around the house. So you should be able to, if your adult says okay, um, you should be able to try the experiment next week. Okay, so that's it for uh, science about dinosaurs. Now we're moving on to language art. I'm going to move all our dinosaur stuff out of the way. First, we're going to start with our vowel song. You know it, sing along. A is a vowel, a vowel, a vowel. A is a vowel, A E I O U. E is a vowel, a vowel, a vowel. E is a vowel, A E I O U. I is a vowel, a vowel, a vowel. I is a vowel, A E I O U. O is a vowel, a vowel, a vowel. O is a vowel, A E I O U. U is a vowel, a vowel, a vowel. U is a vowel, A E I O U. Those are our vowels, our vowels, our vowels. Those are our vowels, A, E, I, O, U. So today we're talking about long vowel U, which is U. And we're going to do vowel, vowel, consonant. Actually, I'm going to do vowel, consonant, vowel, because our long vowel U sentence today has vowel, consonant, vowel. So let's sing that song, right? If you have two vowels next to each other, or a vowel, consonant, vowel, it is a long vowel word. So let's sing this one, and when we say the vowel says its name, we're going to say you. Vowel, consonant, vowel, vowel, consonant, vowel. The first vowel says its name, you. The second vowel says nothing. Okay? So all these one, two, three, four, five letters, A, E, I, O, U, are your vowels. That's it. Any other letter is your consonant. The consonants make their sound. The long vowels say their name and the short vowels. If it's not two vowels next to each other or a vowel consonant vowel and it's just one vowel, it says its sound. Okay, let's do this sentence. 
So it's actually two sentences today. How do I know it's two sentences? Because I see an exclamation mark and a period. So I know those are both sentences. There are no sight words in this sentence today, but there are some blends here. We have S-T-R, which says squirrel. You have to say all those together really fast. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Can you say that? Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. And we have S-C, sk, sk, sk. And we have G-L, school. So we're going to work on those. I'm going to, all of our sentences are, we have to sound out because there's no sight words. Sight words are for memorization. Every other word, if you don't know, you need to use your sound. So I'm going to underline our vowels so we know. The first vowel says its name, second vowel says nothing. First vowel says its name, second vowel says nothing. Oh, these two are underlined because OO here says ooh. OO says ooh. First vowel says his name, second vowel says nothing, first vowel says his name, second vowel says nothing. There's no short vowel. They're all long vowels except for this one, which is an exception. OO says ooh. Are we ready? Let's sound it out. Luke. Luke. Screw. Eam. Scream. Buh. Ooh. Boo. Luke screams boo. I screamed it because of the exclamation mark. La, uke, luke, sk, air, scares, glee, glee. Luke scares glee. Now I'm going to read the whole thing again so I understand it. Luke screams boo. Luke scares glee. Those are my sentences for today. You'll find them under August 21. You can print them. Please continue to practice your sight words. Please practice reading your book number two, long vowels. And it will, and these are blends. So you can start watching your blend videos to learn those, your long vowel videos for language arts. And you can write a sentence, I learned. You can print that and something you learned this week to practice writing. So for science, we are dinosaurs. For math, we're do we, we did addition. And for language arts, we started talking about blends. So you can start watching your uh, consonant blend videos to practice those. Okay, and I hope you enjoyed this week learning about dinosaurs. And I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you next week for some experiments and for more learning. We're going to do subtraction in math. We're going to do experiments in science. And we're going to do more review and adding on some irregulars that are covered in book three, just to get a little more information before we move on to September. So I hope you enjoyed that video and have a great weekend. Bye. Hi, this is Heather from FirstStepReading.com. Please subscribe to our channel on YouTube at First Step Reading. Like us on Facebook at First Step Reading and follow us on Instagram at www.firststepreading.com. Thank you for watching our videos. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, or on our channel. Thank you and have a great day.